Hi, Dickens Reads families. It is Wednesday and time for book club. This week we are going to read Martin and Anne, The Kindred Spirits of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Anne Frank, a book that explores the connection between the two by Nancy Chernin. In 1929, two babies were born on opposite sides of the ocean. They never met. They didn't speak the same language, but their hearts beat with the same hope. On January 15th, Martin's mother, father, and older sister beamed at the beautiful baby in Atlanta, Georgia. On June 12th, Anne's father, mother, and older sister cooled at their beautiful baby in Frankfurt, Germany. But not everyone thought Martin and Anne were beautiful. When Martin was old enough to go to school, he had to go to a different one than his best friend because his skin was dark. Even worse, his friends stopped playing with him. Martin's skin hadn't changed, but suddenly his friend cared when he hadn't before. That made no sense. When Anne was ready for school, Adolf Hitler, the leader of the Nazi party, was elected to lead Germany. Jew Jewish children like Anne were no longer allowed in public schools. Anne's family fled for Holland. But when Hitler invaded Holland, anti-Jewish laws followed. Anne's school closed its doors to her. Suddenly, her friends didn't want to play with her anymore. Everywhere Martin went, he saw signs that said whites only. He wasn't welcome in public parks, swimming pools, or restaurants. Martin didn't think that was fair. Everywhere Anne went, she had to wear a yellow Star of David that let people know she was Jewish. She couldn't buy ice cream or go to a movie. Every day, more signs blared. No Jews allowed. Her father couldn't sell to non-Jewish customers. Nazis burned books by Jewish authors. When Martin was 13, he won a speech competition talking about how black and white children playing, talking about black and white children playing together in harmony. He wondered if the words, right words, could one day change unfair laws. When Anne was 13, she got a diary for her birthday. She was happy she could share her most private thoughts with Kitty, the name she gave her journal. But soon after she began writing, Jews were rounded up and sent to death camps. Anne and her family hid in the attic over her father's business. They had to be very quiet. They couldn't go outside. Trapped in the attic, Anne described how beautiful the world outside was, how light could brighten the deepest darkness. So here is Martin giving his speech and Anne and her attic, both at age 13. When Martin finished high school at 15, most colleges were for whites only. So he went to Morehouse College, a school for black students. There he learned about the Indian leader Mahatma Gandhi and how he won rights for his people using peaceful protests. Could the same thing work in America? Martin decided to become a minister who would lead his people to stand up for justice. Anne, hidden in the attic, continued her studies as best she could. And every day she wrote in her diary about her dreams for a better world. She, even with all the hate around her, Anne believed that people were really good at heart. When Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to give up her bus seat to a white man, 
Martin, now a minister, organized protest marches. He gave speeches. He told people not to ride the bus until everyone was treated fairly. Martin shared his dream of the world with where all were truly considered equal. He gave his words, gave people courage and strength. While Martin grew older, Anne's 15th year was her last. The Nazis stormed Anne's hiding place. They arrested her family and the friends hiding with them. Anne's diary was left behind, pages scattered on the floor of the dusty attic. But she still believed in the power of simple acts of kindness. Martin won the Nobel Peace Prize when he was 35. He worked with President Lyndon Johnson to help pass the Civil Rights Act of 1964. At last, those ugly white-only signs were against the law. Only a few weeks before the concentration camps were liberated, Anne died along with her older sister. She would have been amazed that her diary, rescued by a family friend, became a bestseller. Her father, the only one in her family to survive the camps, had her book published. Actors performed her wor words on stage and film. The cramped rooms where she hid in Amsterdam became a museum dedicated to speaking out against hate. When Martin was 39, <clears throat> he was shot and killed by a man who didn't believe black people deserved the same rights as white people. But no one could kill the way Martin inspired others. Just as Anne's words will never die. Martin and Anne were born in different places, but they both dreamed that one day all babies will be seen as beautiful as all babies are. Love is stronger than hate. Kindness can heal the world. So that is the story of Martin and Anne, the kindred spirits of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Anne Frank. I hope that you learned a lot. And until next Wednesday, keep reading.